update you guys on a previous video I made a bunch of these little peppermint sticks put them together in a stack and glued them up decorated them up and I used dowels for the insides and I was like Jesus there's something that's a little bit lighter and in more inexpensive and easier to find that we could use and I actually found something at Dollar Tree so these are the bubble tea straws you get 50 in a package so you can do several of these if you do a five pack you can do a bunch of these for a dollar 25 that's all it cost me for this big package and they're eight inches long and i have to trim them off a little bit and i'll show you why this has a like a little tapered end on it now you could tip it in and glue it if you wanted to but all i did was just trim it off straight across so there were the ends were flat and then you can take your material and with just a little bit of hot glue you don't want to put too too much on because it will melt the straw these are plastic but they're nice big round straws um, I've never seen them before but I happen to see them hanging in with the paper plates and cups and all that so they're they were hanging on a little strip on that end for me in my store so i'm assuming that that's what where yours will be and again if you need to ask they're bubble tea straws and you can make these peppermint stick logs i guess and or stacks i call them uh bowl fillers and i've put them in my booth and i've sold them all so far so I'm making up a few more, but I can do it a lot more inexpensively using these. And uh, I mean, of course the material's still a lot, but it's not too bad. So I wanted to give you guys that update. So if you go to Dollar Tree and you remember, pick up some of these straws if you wanna make some of these uh, peppermint stick stacks. Some of you may have heard about my craft kits that my husband and I have made and put together or even purchased some. And if you have, thank you very much. There's a few left, but I realized by a few comments that I never made a video about how I created mine or decorated mine. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of different ways that you can do this to get different looks on your angels. I took some of the music paper that comes in the kit and I rubbed it along the edges of my angel to give me a little bit of an idea of the size I wanted so that I could save as much as my paper as possible because I will be using it again on my wings. So I have, I ripped it out kind of at an angle and made it kind of uh, look organic and hopefully aged by the time I get ready to put it on. I took my rub-on transfer and I removed the top layer, the clear layer on the top of that and the bottom piece to cover up the sticky part. The reason why I do that is because that clear piece is so sticky that when you put it on your paper, it will rip it when you get ready to pull it back up. So you wanna make sure that you pull that clear piece off if you're gonna add that to the paper. So I added it to my paper and set it aside and now I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my wood and I added a little bit to my antique wax. You can do that separately in a container so that you don't water down the whole container that I send you in the kit. Uh, but I like to do that because it's just kind of thick and you wanna thin it out a little bit. And when you wet the wood, it actually raises up some of the grains in that and it will accept that wax as a little bit of stain. I then flipped over my piece of paper once my antique wax was dry on the angel and I added Mod Podge just to the back of the paper. I then waited for the paper to dry just a little bit and then added my antique wax or stain to the top of my paper only. Now I added this before I added Mod Podge to seal in my paper because I wanted it to seep into my paper a little more. I want this to be a dark and moody, very rustic angel. And by adding the stain first, it gives it a darker look. If you add the Mod Podge first, which is totally fine, it gives it a lighter look on that paper. So it depends on how you want it to look yourself. I'll show you the difference in the two ways at the end of this segment. 
So I'm just going to stain my edges and the back of my angel and wipe it back. And then here I'm going to take my Mod Podge and seal in that paper and transfer with the Mod Podge over the top. Now I'm going to basically do the same steps here with the wings. I'm getting an outline of where I want my music paper to go over my wings. So I'm just kind of rubbing along the edges to get that look. And then I'm just going to tear it. Again, I want this to be an old uh, organic aged look. So I'm just going to rip it until I get it the way I like it on the top of my angel wings. And it just takes a little bit of time to get it to fit right and make it look the way you want it to look. Once I get it the way I like it, I'm going to add my stain to the paper and before I do any Mod Podging or anything. Again, Mod Podge is a resist for the stain. So if you get it on the top of your paper, it won't stain as dark. And on this piece, I want it to be dark. Again, if you don't want it to be dark, you want to Mod Podge first, then add your stain over the top of it. So once I did that and got it, I dried it a little bit with my heat gun, and now I'm going to add the Mod Podge to the back of my music notes. You could add it to your wings if you wanted to. I just want the Mod Podge to only be on the back of my paper and not be all over the wood on my angel. But again, this is all preference and how you want yours to look. These wings are already dark, so I didn't have to stain them, but if you get the light colored wings, you would want to stain those first, if that is your preference. I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint on a paintbrush and just go around my edges to give it a little bit of definition. I'm gonna take a little paint off the brush also and go around my paper. I want my paper to pop and look really aged and old. So I have just a little tiny bit of black paint on there or even ink you could use. And I'm just brushing it on there. And then I just take my finger and kind of rub it back and smooth it in. I did the same to my wings and the paper on there as well. Then I'm going to seal in my paper on the wings with a little bit of Mod Podge, just a thin coat. I go over it and then I go over it to thin it out and get rid of some of the lines. It doesn't need a lot. I then add my little piece of lace that will be included in the kit and I get that glued in around the neck. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a twine bow which also will be in the kit. It's wrapped around the music note paper because I roll it up and add my rusty star. Now I have my rusty wire that'll also be in the kit that I just kind of spin it around a couple times to give it a nice full halo. And before I put that in, I wanna make sure that I glue my base to, or my angel to my base. And I do that before I stain it, just so it has good adhesion. I'm gonna trim down my little halo. It's gonna go in a little hole that is in the top of your angel head, or you could you could put it in however you want, but it will be there. And then just hold it in until it stays there just right. Then I'm going to stain my base once I have it glued in. So I'm gonna just put that on and then I wipe it back. I glued on my angel wings on the back. I didn't get a video of that. And I also, once I Mod Podge my sticker, or my transfer down at the bottom and add some stain over that. The stain will sit on top of that Mod Podge and darken up that sticker just a little bit and age it so that it doesn't look so bright and white. So I wanted to show you the difference between adding the antique wax after you Mod Podge your paper on. So this is Mod Podge first, then antique wax. So when you wipe it back, it just leaves a little bit of the antique wax. This one is before I put any of the Mod Podge on, if that makes any sense. So the Mod Podge is able, I mean the antique wax is able to get into the paper, get into the wood and make it really nice and dark. So it depends on the the degree of rustic that you want. Do you want a rustic light 
or do you want a rustic dark or do you want to just do it this way now I wanted to show that I take off the plastic coating off the top of the rub-ons because if you put the rub-ons on paper it will stick and the the top layer will stick and you don't want that what you want to stick is the actual rub on so i peel off that top thin layer let's see if i can find it here so this top layer usually you take it and you put it down on your wherever you want to apply it you rub it and peel this back well when you peel this back this is super 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 sticky and it sticks to that paper and it will peel it right up now if you like the rustic look like this then that's what you're gonna get you may be even worse than that so I peel the sticker off from the top of the rub on like this peel it off and then you have your rub on on the paper then I peel the rub on off from this back that it's stick stuck to and I will stick it down on my paper that way I don't have this that's gonna peel up and this has to come off anyway to get to the sticky part behind the rub on I hope that makes sense uh, this one was super easy you stick it down you cut it stick it down peel the paper off and it's fine as long as you make sure that your antique wax is dry so you got to make sure that's dry before you do that so that's what it looks like now and then I'm gonna take my antique wax and put it over the top and see if that gets any darker See if we can darken that up just a little bit. It's a little bit too, too white for my liking. All right, I'm gonna leave that on there for a minute and then I'll wipe it back and see if that kind of blends in a little more. Of course, you could always antique wax or distress your twine and your um, ribbon more if you or your lace more if you wanted to. So it is already a little bit aged because it's vintage lace, but it kind of stands out, which is fine with me, but some people may want to distress that too. We'll just dab it. That aged that up just a little bit. So that's good, so it's not so bright white. And I just dabbed it instead of wiping it back. I like that a little bit better. I found these great wood slices at the free area at my dump in this bag a while back, quite a while back, and I've just had them kicking around because I didn't want to use them yet, and I knew I wanted to use them for some Christmas decor, so I just set them aside until now. So this whole great big bag is just fantastic. These are nice birchwood cookies, so I laid them all out as many as I thought I wanted, and I'm giving them a couple coats of off-white paint, whatever I have on hand. The wood was dry, so it sucked up quite a bit of the first coat and actually quite a bit of the second coat. But I don't need a lot on there to, for coverage. I'm going to be using these papers that I got off from, I think, Etsy. If I can find them, I'll put the link down in the description. I just popped it on my printer and scanned out a couple, made a couple copies of them. They're on rice paper, so I made a couple copies on just regular copy paper as well. I cut out a couple of the ones that I wanted to use, and once my cookies were dry, I am going to Mod Podge them down on the top. down and grabbed a few pieces of scrap wood all the same length but different widths and I'm going to give it a quick sand to smooth out my edges and the ends that were cut. 
Then I'm going to take some of my antique wax and use it as a stain and stain three of them. Then the other three are going to get a coat of red paint. Once they're dry, I'll take some stain and go over those to just kind of tone down some of that red and give it a more antiqued look. put a countersink bit on my drill and on the bottom of my pieces of wood I drill down just a little bit so when I screw the screw up through the wood the head of that will sit inside that little divot that the countersink makes then I'm going to add one screw to each of those little divots so that I can screw on the little wood cookies I would suggest drilling a little hole in the bottom of the cookies as well so that when the screw goes up through it, it doesn't crack. A few of mine cracked a little bit. It's okay for mine because I'm going to be adding some glitter to my pieces, but if you are not going to be adding glitter that would cover that little crack up, you probably would want to, like I said, drill the bottom of that. Put a little hole off to the side and added a little bottle brush tree. I have a bunch of these, so I thought I would use them for this and it worked really well. I then took some of the Mod Podge and added it to places where I wanted my glitter to stick to and added that to it. To embellish this a little bit more, I added some greenery to the very top and a twine bow. I think the glitter and everything put together gives this an antique aged look, almost a vintage look as well. I thought it needed a little something around the base of the tree, so I took some batting and added it around to give it a look of some snow that has collected around it. I recently redid one of the electric black fireplaces with the faux wood inside. I gutted the whole thing and cleaned it out so that I could use it for some displays. So I thought I would display these in there and show you what it looked like. I do have a video on redoing one of those stoves, so I will link that down below for you to check out. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know if you have a favorite and which one it is. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already and check out the next video that you'll see on the screen. I know you're gonna love it.